Hello, I'm Kyle Lacroix from Sets Consulting, and this is episode 11 of Sets Stories. Today's episode, Resilience. In October of 2005, I had been working at my club in Boca Raton for exactly one year. Things were going great. Business was growing quickly, and we had a great staff in place, and I was loving it. It was truly my dream job. And towards the end of this summer, uh, as every summer in Florida, there is hurricane season. And being a native Floridian, uh, I don't really pay too much attention to it. You know, um, I've been through them before, uh, never had any damage, never had any close calls, really. Um, you know, a few hurricanes come and go, and they're never as bad as what the media and the news people say they're going to be. So as a native Floridian, you have a little bit of cockiness, a little bit of bravado that, you know, it's just not going to happen. Not me, not us. But during this time, there was a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico named Wilma. And she was hanging around the Yucatan Peninsula. And from what the meteorologist said, uh, hurricanes only go to up to a Category 5. That's the most severe. But they said that if there was a Category 6, Wilma would have been it. Um, but again, it was still a ways away. And there was really no chance it was going to hit the east coast of Florida because it had already passed. Well, turns out Wilma went straight north and then she went back east towards Florida. Um, you know, it was going to hit the West Coast. So, again, we were on the East Coast. We weren't too concerned. But like every summer for hurricane season, we always take precautions. We take down wind screens, remove all the chairs and tables. You know, we certainly do our, our due diligence. But this one really didn't bother us too much. So it hits the west coast of Florida, and usually by this time when a hurricane hits land, it kind of dissipates, dies down, breaks apart. But for some reason, this hurricane did not. Uh, Wilma only got stronger, and as it tore across the west coast, it then hit the east coast and pretty much consumed all of Palm Beach County. So it was definitely the most intense storm I've ever been a part of. And when we got to the club, we saw that there was a lot of damage, more damage than we uh, were ever expecting. Uh, I think in total, it was over a million dollars worth of damage just to the tennis facility alone. Um, the buildings were okay. It was just the tennis courts were absolutely trashed. Uh, I know net, net posts were down. All the fences were down. Um, our fence for court number one was actually in the parking lot. Um, and I know we made a decision to keep these giant aluminum bleachers in place next to court one, uh, thinking, you know, they weigh a lot and there's no way a hurricane's going to come and really do anything to it. But when we got to the club, uh, one of the rows of the bleachers was actually stuck in the court like a toothpick in a sandwich. And the rest of the bleacher, we still haven't found it yet. Have no clue where it went. But this hurricane was powerful. It was something that I had never seen before. Um, so it scared all of us. But mostly the club was in complete ruins. And so, of course, we make some calls to some tennis court construction companies, see if they could come out, obviously help us and, and rebuild. And they said, uh, no, we, we – have a list of, of clubs that have already contacted us. It's going to be at least three months before we can even come to see you guys. So we just kind of stood around and stared at each other and said, okay, well, we can either pack it up and say it's been a fun ride for one year, um, or we can, we can do this ourselves. And it's going to take a lot of work, but we don't really have much of a choice. And it's not even for us and our financial future, uh, but it's also for the membership. Uh, it's for the community. And so we all agreed that, you know, trying to get the courts up even by ourselves, which we are not experts at it, but even if we got one court up, we could at least start teaching a lesson, a clinic, something, just to kind of get the revenue rolling in. Um, I was in no mood to move back into my car in the Walmart parking lot. 
if you don't know what I'm referring to, go back to one of my original set stories and uh, that whole story is in there. So we started working and we worked for about a month straight and we put up fence posts and we resurfaced courts and we repainted and we did a lot of landscaping. Um, and, you know, it wasn't pretty work. It wasn't glamorous, but it was something that had to be done. And we looked at it not as a setback, but as a setup, because what it did is it gave us a chance to reevaluate from the first year what we were doing right, what we were doing wrong, but also turn the club into a place that we wanted it to look like. Um, and we had complete control of that. So, um, you know, it was, it was a, a, a tough time for sure, uh, a lot of uncertainty. But despite a natural disaster, we pulled through. Um, it's funny, I still walk around some of the courts and I remember those exact fence posts and they're still up, they're still standing. Um, so I always get a good smile out of that. Uh, knowing that some of our hard work still remains. But, um, you know, a lot of times when you're a player, when you're a coach, you face a tough match, uh, you lose it, you know, third set breaker. Um, it, it's heartbreaking. But, you know, your, your toughness and your competitive spirit isn't determined by how many matches you win. It's often determined by the matches you lose and how you recover from that. So as I, as I always like to say, tough times don't last, tough people do. And fortunately, my team at our club was super tough. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many trips in the golf cart we had to make to transfer dirt and clay uh, to another part of the property. But you know, looking back on 2005 and Hurricane Wilma, I just think so many people lost everything. And I look at it as I actually gained so much. Uh, better rapport in the community. Uh, the members loved us because of it. Uh, a much stronger team bond because of what we went through. And just an opportunity to be grateful for what I previously had and what I was going to have in the future, which was really a brand new club. And it was a brand new club made and built from my own hands. Nothing better than that. So uh, natural disasters should not get in your way. They didn't get in my way. So a tennis match is only a tennis match. If you lose it, you'll get back and you'll win the next one. Guys, hope you liked the story. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great one. And remember, you can see all of our stories on our website at www.setsconsult.org. Thanks so much. Have an amazing day. Bye.